Today, we're gonna talk about vegan recipes. But when I say vegan and you're not a vegan or a vegetarian, don't like do this to me because these are such recipes. They are guilt-free and they are tasting incredibly well because they were not invented because like the meat is non-existent or like it's a replacement for another recipe like take the milk out, take the cheese out and put something else. These were through thousands of years developed by people and loved and spread through people. Some ladies, some men invented it and through time they became perfect. And finally our touches made it even greater, hopefully. So I'm gonna cut everything short and start from the 10th one. Tenth one is, we call that the rainbow salad. The green lentils are heavens. They are really high on protein and they keep you really full for a long time. So, boil the green lentils, have a bit of couscous, add some red peppers, cucumbers, dill, parsley, some mint and a bit of olive oil. And to make the sauce a little higher on taste, we can add a bit of soy sauce and a bit of coriander seeds, black pepper and white wine vinegar. Or if you don't use wine, you can use grape vinegar. Finally, a touch of lemon. This you can eat hot, this you can eat cold. Many of these vegan recipes, the beautiful side is when it's cold, it's beautiful in another way. And when it's hot, beautiful in another way. So both good and you can enjoy it. Ninth one is called kısır. The name kısır is weird because when you just directly translate it, it's unfertile. But it's actually one of the most fertile recipes in the world. You use like a cup of bulgur and it becomes a dish like this. You put the bulgur and then you add some warm water and then you knead it with your hands. A bit of pepper paste, tomato paste, some cumin, black pepper salt and some oil. And then it becomes this fluffy, gorgeous thing. And to that, you add some greens, which could be as spring onions and parsley. This is the general way of preparing the classical kısır. But of course, this was something that was given as a gift to us. And I have developed it into different ways. For example, now it's almost the green plum time. It's these sour plums. You can make kısır with those sour green plums. It's incredible. Or instead of putting the pepper paste and tomato paste, you add beetroot pickle and you rub with the beetroot pickle and then you get this purple kısır, which is incredible. Or one of the oldest ones that I have made. In some parts in Anatolia, they also put cucumbers in the kısır. Okay, cucumbers are relative to the melon. So, okay, I take the cucumber out and put the melon in. And what bulgur does is like, if you put oil, it sucks the oil. If you put water, it sucks the water. So the more you put, the tastier it becomes. And it goes dry really fast. But as you know, melon has a lot of water and a bit of sweetness as well. So the sweetness and the sours go together and we come up with melon kısır, which is incredible. Can be served for the kings and queens. This is called fava. You know the fava beans, those beans, but you make that fava from the dried ones. It's actually one of my comfort food. When I'm at the weekend, for example, when I, for the week I eat a lot or when I eat very different, various kind of things, I don't want to eat something sophisticated. I want something which is really tasty, but easy to make. What I do, I put to the pan my fava beans, I put some water and onion, and then I put it into boiling. I usually make it in the pressure cooker. I take the pressure cooker out, put some salt, some olive oil, a bit of sugar, and we fight with Bahar on that. She doesn't like it with sugar, but it makes a balance. In Turkey, we have olive oil dishes. We like that balance, so we add a bit of sugar. Then you put it on a pot. It gets the shape of the pot. When it gets cool, you turn it on and then it has this beautiful shape. You can cut it and eat it or you can like put it into various shapes. And the beautiful thing, a friend of mine invented this, Yeshim dearest Yeshim. She put rakı, which is Greeks call it uzo, Arabs call it arak. Small differences, but the idea is same. You also put a bit of that inside and it has that anise smelling taste and it's great. And when you eat it cold, mwah. if you haven't tried it, 
that was one of the videos that was not watched so much. I'm really unhappy about that. You should watch it. And I have different variations of making fava beans. They're great. So keep in mind, there are two kinds of people who are watching our videos. Ones are watching the videos, saying thank you and going. The other ones saying, giving a nice comment, which warms our heart and makes us more stronger, fascinated. And they leave a comment, they press like, and they are usually subscribed and sometimes also click to the bell as well so that they get all the videos. Please be one of those privileged family members. We'll be very happy. We have this meze table. Spain call it tapas, India's call it tali, like bits of bits of things in Europe. One thing that will always be there is our charcoal eggplants. You poke holes to the eggplant with a knife. You put it on the stove. When it gets soft, turn the other side. And when everywhere is soft, you put it on your cutting board, have a slice and use a spoon and take the eggplant out. When it's still hot, and put a bit of salt and put it into small chunks. Then a bit of olive oil, some garlic, and if you want some lemon, or if you don't want no lemon, if you want some yogurt and some tahini maybe, and it's a great, great tasting eggplant dish. Eggplant is a tricky thing. I want to make an episode about it. Sometimes if you cook it well, it becomes a king. If you don't cook it well, it becomes, I don't want to say anything like negative to anyone. So something not so good. Okay, so let's move to the sixth one. Sixth one is probably it's a plant which has a heart. Do you know any plant which has a heart? I do. Anyone? No? no. Bahar, don't act like an asshole student <laughs> which knows every. Okay, I'm asking to the newcomers. Ah, uh, Enginar. Enginar, the artichoke. Yeah. Actually, I wanted to include this recipe because this is called Turkish zeytinyağlı, or Turkish olive oil dishes. The way of making this is same for like 10 different vegetables. How does it done? Put a pan, you put some olive oil, then some onions. Then if you have garniture, like in this case it's peas and some potatoes, something like that, and some garlic. You stir fry it a bit, and then you put the heart of the artichokes, and you put that mixture on top of the artichokes, put a bit of water, and if it's a pressure cooker, it's much easier. Like close the lid, for in five minutes, you get a really beautiful thing. And olive oil dishes, interestingly, are done hot and they are really good when they're hot, but they're incredible the next day when they're cold. You cool them outside, you put them in the refrigerator, and then the next day they are, voila, 10 times better. How does this work? I have no idea. But this is olive oil dishes. If you're interested, check out these dishes. They are really much better than many of the meaty things that we eat and we ate and we love. So, simple, great. Okay, we're trying to celebrate because we passed the level of 500,000, halfway to the million. So, a half placket. This was the old one for the Turkish channels. And we want to celebrate you by giving a little gift. Which are our nice. And also your name is going to be here, which will be after Brax and mine, the first ones to get a name. Uh, yes. And to get that, you can write a comment down below why you like us. Why do you like channel. the channel? The reason you like watching the videos so that we learn and five people from, I think we're going to do a lottery from the lottery. We, we're going to send a story after a week. So for Arkan and everyone to follow easily, if you also write in hashtag of I love Rifka's kitchen, that Welcome. would be marvelous. Yeah. Now let's move to some carbohydrates. No? Yes. yes. There is something called chiberek, and in the Turkish channel, the dough is probably it's because it's so well, it's watched over 3 million times. The dough is very simple to make. A cup of flour, baking powder, salt, bit of vinegar, some coconut oil and water. And you mix it really well, you open the dough in like this big, and then on the side is a filling, some onions, garlic, mushrooms, olive oil, salt and pepper. 
you mix them really well, you put it in and then close it well. Actually, we have tried, you can shallow fry or deep fry those beautiful things, or you can air fry them. And it's crunchy outside, soft inside, and the mushroom, onion, and garlic, that mixture went down really well. And please watch that video on the tricks of how to do it. It gives the taste of a like minced meat, like minced kima, so well. And it's called chiberek. And it's very much like samosa, the dough, but even crunchier and beautiful. Fourth one is the recipe I made last week. It's the fellah köfte. So if you haven't watched it, it's there. I don't want to bore anyone. So these are like small köftes, very easy to make, so fast to make. And the sauce is so great. And in 10 to 15 minutes, you can make that. It's like small greatness of the world. So the third one, it's the falafel. I'm a dyslexic, so actually it's kind of ironic that I cannot follow recipes and now I'm giving recipes to you guys, but actually it's the hardest thing about my job. So thank God, God sent me Burak. I have tried many people's falafel recipes and they never worked. So this is a recipe on the channel that really works well. How does it work? You put some broad beans and chickpeas and put them some water overnight hopefully and they grow but they're still tikr tikr. it's like they're crunchy add some onion garlic coriander parsley dill some cinnamon black pepper salt hot paprika cloves baking powder some baking soda tablespoon of sesame seeds and a bit of oil as well and you make that mulch very important thing you have to put that mulch into the refrigerator for at least an hour preferably several hours and then take it out i used you know the espresso cup there is the filter the filter is very much like the shape of the falafel they do it on the streets you take that out put a bit of oil and then push and then you deep fry it and it's the greatest falafel you can eat. I'm trying to read all your comments, so some of them hurt. Some people say, okay, we don't put like clothes to the falafel. Some people do, some people don't. I have tried all and this is Refika's falafel and it's guaranteed that it's very beautiful. So that's it. Now the second one, shakshuka. Shakshuka in the world is usually known as the egg recipe. But in Turkey, our shakshuka is fried eggplant. You peel the eggplant into straps, you dice them, you put some green peppers into circles, you fry them both, and then you make a nice, beautiful tomato sauce. The details are on the recipe. You can go to that recipe always. And then you put them all together and boil so that the eggplant soaks the beautiness of that tomato sauce. Voila, it's also really good hot. It's incredible when it's cold. I'm going to drown in my saliva. Sacrilicious. Mm, so it's this incredible dish. You can make it with yogurt as well and perfect. So can you guess which one is the first one? The best vegan recipe? Hummus. Hummus. Bravo. It's the nerd of the class. <laughs> So, hummus. Guys, if you haven't tried our hummus, you have missed something really important. Briefly, I'm going to tell how, but you can also go to the recipe. You take the chickpeas and you have to take the skins off. So I have a Refika strategy to take the skins off, put it on a flowing water, and then you rub the chickpeas and the skins get up and collect on the side, you take them out. One thing I have learned from you guys, probably the followers of the vegan recipes, is something a kafaba, which is the water that the chickpeas sit in when you get the can. It's very nice. It works as like the egg white. And when you really beat it well, it becomes like the same as the egg white. So it's really great. That's something that we don't throw away. I did, in, I know, in the video. Sorry about that. You're great. So you take it out, you put it into the processor, you put some tahini, lemon juice, some salt, garlic and olive oil, and then you start the processor. But what you do, instead of putting water, we add ice cubes and slowly we work the machine for about 10 minutes. With the ice cube, it doesn't heat up the hummus 
and when it heats up the taste of the olive oil and the taste of the lemon juice slightly changes so it's very important for it not to heat up but if you want it to silky smooth and some fluffy hummus that's something we have to do so we do it and we take it out and we spread it if you want you know our falafel friend was there we take a simit and Burak's simit recipe is also on the channel so great you take half the simit you put some hummus and kashik salatası which is again the recipe is here onions cucumbers tomatoes a bit of vinegar you put that salad on and then the falafels on top if you want some little bit of yogurt or tahini on top as well and then you get the bites and heaven is just there so that's it i hope you like our vegan recipes if you like them you know what to do and please clap our dearest bahar for answering all the questions right this time take care